Today's show is sponsored by the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Enjoy exceptional bourbon, bourbon seminars, and cuisine surrounded by the charm and culture of New Orleans. The dates are March 24 through 26. Learn more at neworleansbourbonfestival.com. We are also sponsored by Round Table Woodworks and BarrelChips.com. They are bringing whiskey smoke to your favorite foods with their authentic whiskey barrel smoking chips. You are listening to the Firewater Review. This is a podcast dedicated to whiskey reviews. On today's show, we will be reviewing Noah's Mill Bourbon. I am your host, Seth Brown. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Aaron Cave. How are you, sir? Doing well. How about you, Seth? I'm doing fantastic. And we have someone else on the line with us this evening, Mr. Chris Williams. How are you, sir? Fantastic. How are you guys? Doing great. Doing great. Great. So, Aaron, you and Chris, I think, have probably more history than what uh, Chris and myself have. So if you want to get into how you met Chris, and then we'll let Chris tell us a little bit about him. Sure, sure. Uh, Yeah, I met Chris actually through uh, Steve Akeley. Uh, Steve sent me a uh, sample of what is called the Whiskey Butler that Chris created. And I got to do a uh, full review on it for the Bourbon Zeppelin. So wrote a nice little column about it. And I actually called Chris, got in contact with him and called him to actually get kind of the backstory, how he got into doing what he does and how he met his uh, uh, partner that he does everything with. And so uh, through that, I went ahead and kept in contact with him. And here we are. So, uh, so Chris, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Like you said, I, uh, I, uh, I make stuff. I own a company, uh, Round Table Woodworks, and I did meet uh, Steve through Instagram and was fortunate enough to be able to send in some product for review. And obviously one of those landed in Aaron's lap, which I'm glad it did. Um, I uh, started my company, I don't know, two, three years ago. With my business partner, I was talking right before we started recording. I was saying I used to be a wine guy. I worked at a uh, Benny's Beverage Depot up in Chicagoland. Oh, okay, cool. Wine consultant for about four years, and so you know, I did a lot of wine classes and wine tasting. But every day, people would come through with bourbon and whiskey too. So I slowly got more and more into it. And uh, Rob, who's actually my business partner, was much more into the bourbon, and he kind of nudged me willingly that way so um i've since left we run our company full-time now so i've let the wine kind of go and i focus a lot more on drinking good whiskey which is a lot more fun and when i talk to people about whiskey versus wine like i can buy a hundred dollar bottle of wine and it's gone with dinner i can buy a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey and i can share that with people for you know months so yep yeah, economically it works out a lot better for me. Yeah. So. so, is there any other reason do, why you got away from wine other than a love for whiskey? Nah, no, not really. I mean, I moved out of the area, so a lot of the people that I used to hang out with that were more into wine were people that I worked with. And when I left that job, um, I actually I left Chicago and too. I now live in a super small town in West Central Illinois. So, um, my wine selection around here is poor. Um, but I do have a couple places that I can go get um, really good bottles of whiskey. So that uh, that's helped. Um, also, my wife doesn't drink too much. So I used to share wine with her. And now if I'm drinking by myself, I prefer whiskey. So she doesn't steal, just, she doesn't steal your stash. Doesn't steal my stash. <laughs> so it's it's uh, beneficial for me, I suppose. So but. I mean, and I, uh, we started making stuff out of bourbon barrels, um, right when I, when I was still working at Benny's, um, I got a hold of an old bourbon barrel. We broke it down. We made bottle openers out of it. And just the, the aromas that you deal with when doing woodworking, 
the wood, the sawdust, and all that, when you combine it with wood that's been aged in, aged with whiskey in it, like it takes on a whole new, like a whole new high of the amazing smells. So you can kind of replicate that, not the sawdust so much, but with a glass of whiskey, and it's just something I really enjoy. So. So have you always worked in wood or have you just kind of, kind of piddled, if you will? Um, I've always piddled in with woodworking. Um, my family has a small shop. That's where I do all of our work right now. Um, they bought a house. My mom and my stepdad bought a house when I was five and we completely remodeled the entire thing down to, we built a custom kitchen my junior year of high school. Wow. And ever since we did that, like I've been obsessed. So for 13 years, I lived in Chicagoland, and I didn't really have access to a wood shop. But when I had the opportunity to move back to my hometown um, and do it full time, it's just something we went at full force. Awesome. So is there any part of the barrel that you don't use in any of the stuff that you guys are making? The only thing we don't use right now, um, and it's mainly because I haven't had time and I have an excess of them, is the rings. So. We we cut all the rings off. We take the barrels down to just staves and lids. Um, we save all the lids. We either um, sell them or we break them down to do things that uh, you can't really make out of the curve stave. Yeah. So, um, and then anything that we don't use out of the staves or the lids or any scraps we have left over, um, we chip up and make our whiskey barrel smoking chips for uh, the wood smoker. Yeah. And I, yeah, I was going to ask you about those, man. We, you know, with you being a sponsor of the shows on the network, you were kind enough to send us some of that. And oh my gosh, uh, you know, I know I, I think phenomenal. I te- yeah, it does. I texted, oh. I think I texted you or messaged you on Instagram and said, did. can I make like a, a mattress filler out of this? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it smells, it smells amazing. And I cook with it often. Um, and just today we were doing, a little bit of work and we took a bit of a break and I have a little hand blowtorch uh-huh. and we just took a stave and just burned it. And the smells that came off of it were amazing. So our next, hopefully over the weekend, we're going to try to make some smoke cocktails. Oh, cool. The nice. bourbon barrel, because you get all that caramel and vanilla, you get all those smells out of the smoke and it's just, it's excellent. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And you guys are making some cool stuff too with the staves and, you know, Aaron mentioned the Butler and Aaron, I think you have uh, one or two other pieces too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have the, uh, Glen Karen glass display, which I love and it's, uh, they did a great job. You guys, uh, even, uh, kind of personalized it for me, did some nice engraving on it. Um, I, I love that thing. Uh, yeah, it's, you guys are doing some great stuff. Yeah, one thing we try to do to go a little bit of step above is personalization. We've got we have a laser in our shop, so up to a certain size we can laser engrave about anything. And the laser engraving on the on the barrel staves comes out pretty cool. And yeah, we really like that. Yeah, that's cool. So is it is it something that if I wanted something personalized, can they can they go on the website and say, hey, this is what I want? Or how, how does that work if somebody wants, wants something personalized? So I mean, we sell pretty much everything on Etsy, and there's a comment section on there. Um, a lot of things on there we offer personalized. Like we do custom engraved Glen Karen glasses. Um, we also do bottle openers. And those are listed there, and you just kind of let us know in the comments what you want. Um, a lot of people like to contact us before they order just to make sure that it is something that will engrave and will look good. And we've turned away business because we just tell people, you know, like it's not going to come out the way you think in your head it's going to come out. So like I could sell it to you, but you're going to be disappointed at the end of the day. And we don't want that. Right, right. So a lot of times when that's the situation, we'll work with them to find a different thing that they could do or another solution. And um, I think we've gained a lot of repeat customers that way because, I mean, we'd rather people be happy forever than, you know, make a buck today. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Very cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to order a piece. As soon as I'm done building my bar, I'm going to have to order something for, for it, for all my glasses. And that sounds good. My uh, wife will be happy to get all of my glasses out of the cabinet from upstairs in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife tells me that the, that cabinet's for drinking glasses and her tea mugs, not my whiskey mug. Not my whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> they all get shoved into the corner in my office. 
I know the feeling. I know the <laughs> feeling. So can I can let me ask you guys something? Uh, do you guys have like a glass in each room, just kind of hiding out? I always have glass. I feel like in every room of the house. Every time I walk in, I'm like, oh, look, there's glass there. <laughs> yeah, I think especially like I've, this is the second podcast I've done this week. So I'm actually in my spare room, which is just kind of a storage room. And I'm looking out and I have three glasses on the table and three bottles of whiskey. Nice. Which I never been in here, but they're here now. <laughs> my wife has a closet that used to be my whiskey closet and now it's her crafting closet. But my mini fridge is still in there. So I have bottles and glasses on top of that, like next to the sewing machine and the, the wrapping paper. And then my office and then the kitchen and the dining room. And once in a while, you'll find a stray one like on the nightstand next to the bed. So I keep them. We keep we keep glasses pretty much everywhere here. Well, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I keep them. I have because uh, I don't ever put my Glen Karens or my um, Norn glasses in the dishwasher. I always just you know, get really hot water and rinse them out real good. Yeah. And then I turn them upside down on just a, uh, a folded up paper towel. Mm-hmm. So there's almost always two or three glasses, you know, sitting on the, the counter drying from, you know, the night or two before. And then there's typically, you know, a, a couple in the cabinet in the kitchen but then mostly now anymore, like I, the bourbon that I keep upstairs in the kitchen is just kind of, you know, not even everyday drinker stuff. It's stuff that I might make an occasional cocktail with, or if somebody wants just a quick drink when they're coming over, I'll offer them that. Because all all my other good stuff is down in my office. So I, I keep, there's a little uh, table. Um, it's a, uh, a cherry wood table. Actually, you'll enjoy that, Chris. My dad made it. He used to own a wood shop. Um and it holds a uh, a 1960s Zenith radio on it, and all my glasses are sitting on that table. So that I keep probably uh, there's probably eight or ten glasses over there sitting on it right now. So they're I, I, they're not in every room, but they're in the most important rooms. I'll say it that way, where they should be. Yes. So Aaron, I think. Chris requested that we review Noah's mill. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he gave me actually two options and, uh, you did the one he, the first one he sent me, uh, I actually, I don't have a bottle of it, but I've been wanting to pick it up, but it's Tom's foolery, uh, bottled and bond, which is a, uh, not really local to me, but it's up in Cleveland. So about two hours from me, I've been wanting to try it, but I just haven't picked up a bottle yet. Uh, but I figured we we all had Noah's Mill probably, so we yeah. kind of went with this. Yep. I'll tell you if you can get a hand if you get your hands on the Tom Swillery, it won't disappoint. It's young, but it's uh it's tasty. I've seen it. What was it? It was the uh, the Whiskey Barrel Society. Aaron, didn't y'all do a yeah, couple of picks of that? We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We picked. Uh, we actually did a non chill filtered uh, barrel proof Applejack. And we did a barrel proof uh, wheat whiskey that he did. Nice. So um, we and I've actually tried a uh, barrel proof uh, pick of the his bourbon, which is was really good. And I actually have a rye that someone picked a barrel proof rye hmm. that's uh, very good as well. So, yeah, they're pumping up some pumping up some great stuff up there. Cool. I haven't seen them down here yet. I don't know. I don't know where they how widely they distribute it just yet i don't i, I, I don't think it's it. super wide yet but they're working on a i think they're working on building a new facility oh okay oh really nice yeah cool well we are drinking noah's mill and as per usual aaron would you like to give a little info on this fine whiskey i would love to so uh noah's mill is as most everyone knows, is a product of the Kentucky Bourbon Distillers, which is also go by uh, Willits. Um, the brand is owned by uh, Kentucky Bourbon Distillers, but uh, it's kind of funny because on their bottles they don't ever really identify Kentucky Bourbon Distillers or Willits. Mm-hmm. They uh, kind of make up like fake names almost. So uh, if you look at your bottle of Noah's Mill, it's made by Noah's Mill Distillery, which does not exist. Right. So um, I I don't know why they do that, but it's 
kind of a weird little thing that they do with m- almost all their uh, small batch bourbons. So uh, their nose mill is one of their small batch bourbons, uh, which within their lineup, there's also like Rowan's Creek, uh, the Kentucky Vintage, the Pure Kentucky. That's, you know, just a few of them. There's a couple more out there. But uh, originally, when Noah's Mill was first released, it had a 15-year age statement. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, with all the bourbon shortage and everything, in 2012, they ended up dropping that age statement and just putting on the tag, aged until fully matured. Yeah. So, you know, it's anyone's guess kind of what the what it is now i you know if i had to put my finger on it maybe somewhere between nine and nine and twelve yeah but uh it could, it could be a little bit older who knows uh but uh so kentucky bourbon distillers did not actually operate a uh working distillery between 1980 and 2012 they kind of just shut down uh in the 70s and they started just buying barrels and aging them themselves and bottling them under their, uh, their names and then, uh, releasing them as either, you know, their will at family estate or, you know, blending them into small batches like Noah's mill. So, uh, but as of 2012, they, uh, started, uh, started up their stills again and producing their own juice. They've come out with a, uh, rye, uh, three-year rye, which is uh, a pretty decent selection on the market now. And uh, I think last year they released their four-year family estate. And you can also now find the uh, old Bardstown bottled and bond, which is their juice uh, in Kentucky only right now, but hopefully it'll start branching out. Yeah. So um, that's what I got. Have have either of y'all had the old Bardstown yet? I had it for the first time. this past weekend, actually, I uh, got together with a bunch of guys and one of them brought it and I've been wanting, been dying to try it. And um, it's it is like nothing I've ever tried before, but it's very good. Huh. It, yeah, it I was have... just blew me right. away. Yeah, you know, it just blew me away how different it was from anything that I've had before. And just but it but it was very good. I have my eyes out for it. And when I finally make a trip to Kentucky. I'm going to look for it, but I have not had one yet. Do you, either of y'all know if it's widely available in Kentucky? I, I think it is. is uh, it? Fr- from what I hear from, you know, the Bourbon Daily, unless you can get it anywhere, it seemed like. Okay. But uh, I think it's, I think it's pretty, pretty available. So the, the Noah's Mill, I don't know if either of y'all have ever heard this, but it was rumored i think at one point to be uh sourced heaven hill juice i i've heard that as well and uh, actually before before the show why why we were uh patiently waiting <laughs> i had a pour of noah's mill a pour of heaven hill bottled and bond and a pour of evan williams white label and tried them all together and i do have a lot of similarities to them i will yeah i believe yeah, I've heard a lot of stories about where some of their, uh, you know, their older aged stuff, some of the the family reserve stuff is is um, or family estate offerings are from, but you know, just like anything else, who, who knows what's true and what's not. So yeah, I read an article today that said that Heaven Hill has one point two million barrels aging. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Twenty five percent of the whiskey stock in the world. Yep. So, and they're only second place. Yep. So they own a quarter of the market. I, I'm not sure the other one. I assume Sazerac. Actually, I think it's a Scotch. It's like Balvenie or somebody. Or oh, but it's, but it's only this was only for bourbon. Oh, okay, bourbon. I thought it was. I I, I, I want to say they have the the second largest whiskey too. Oh, they might. So maybe that's what I was saying. The second largest whiskey. But. I mean, if they've got 25% of the stock, I've got a feeling a lot of these guys are buying from them. Yeah. 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 And like you were mentioning too, Aaron, the, uh, the, the, uh, KDB bottles, they all have the, the similar markings, you know, they, they all used to have wax top on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. But they, you know, even the, the family estates and the Noah, Noah's mills and the, uh, Rowan's Creek had wax top. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kentucky pride still has it. Yeah, so does uh, Johnny Drum. Oh, yeah, that's right. Still has yeah. it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but the Noah's Mill, the the Rowan's Creek, and even the the family estate stuff is kind of foregone. The the wax tops, but they all still have the, mm-hmm. the similar markings. They have the little uh, twine tag on them. So anyway, all right. Well, what we'll do, we'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll give this thing a review, and we'll come back and share our notes. So we'll be right back. We talk a lot about bourbon on the show, and one of the most important things uh, that I think we all three can agree on is the ingredients that go into a bourbon. The better the ingredients are that go into any whiskey, really, not just bourbon, but any whiskey, the better the final result is. Could you guys agree on that? Amen. Yeah. Hell yeah. So we get, we have pig of the month. Pig of now. the month. It's the pig of the month. Yes. And and that's one of the things that they tout is that everything they do, everything that goes into their meats is all only free range, growth hormone free and grass fed. It's all natural ingredients. There are no preservatives, nitrates or additives. Nitrates are one of the big things that I know my wife looks for when she goes to the store looking for bacon. Mm, bacon. It's hard to find bacon. <laughs> That does not have it, it is. Yeah. It's hard to find bacon that does not have nitrates added to Seth, it. Seth, you are talking all fancy and scientific, and I love that. Let me tell the listeners from my perspective, it's Please do. good bacon. Oh my yes. God. Bacon. Bacon. Bacon bacon. Seth, carry on. Carry on. I love no, what you're no. saying. No, you're it, spot on. You know, I just thought for the more like Evan type of people in the crowd, I wanted to be like bacon these pigs are good they are they are good pig of the month great so so great too is the fact that everything comes other than the bacon and the sausage uh everything is just heat and eat so that you know it's been fully prepared no shortcuts taken they're out there grilling the stuff and and making it to perfection so check it out bacon it's shipped to your doorstep and speaking of that if you use the code bourbon daily shipping is free so check them out at pig Bacon. Do it. All right. Welcome back, everyone. During the break, we were sipping on some Noah's Mill from KDB, which comes in at 114.3 proof. So we'll kick it off. We'll let Aaron give his notes, and then we'll kick it over to Chris to share his uh, his notes and score. And then uh, I will bring up the rear and close out the show. Aaron, let us know what you think about this one, sir. All right. Well, the first thing I notice is uh, on the nose, it's just it's loaded with uh, vanilla and caramel. A little bit of, I think a little bit of, like a buttered uh, corn off the nose, brown sugar, tons of cinnamon, uh, dark chocolate, a little bit of raisins, and toasted oak. Uh, I, th- I really get, like, right after all of the smell smells and aromas, I really get that toasted oak at the end of it, uh, which I really enjoy. It's, I, I really like it. Uh, on the palate, uh, it's, it's just packed with flavors. Uh, first, first off, it's just like a peppery rice spice with the uh, cinnamon and just a hint of mint. And then that's just like mid palate. I get a ton of toasted just nuts, just peanuts, almonds, uh, pecans, which is a big nutty flavor there with a little bit of burnt sugar, uh, followed by just a hint of fig. Uh, and just kind of towards the back, it's just tobacco and uh, toasted oak. A uh, lot of toasted oak, uh, and the finish uh, on this is just—it's—it's it's long. It's not super long, but it's a little bit more than a medium, and it's kind of a uh, nutty on the finish with uh, hints of rye, uh, charred oak, and I get a little bit of pipe tobacco on it. So, um, uh, you, you know, I, I really like it. Um, I. You know, the first time I had this, I really 
loved Noah's Mill, and I don't know if the quality of it has gone down over the years, but it, it's not what I remembered uh, for me, anyways. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, you know, it's it's a good solid pour. I, I always recommend it to anyone who asks me what's a good bourbon to find, um, and so I'm I'm giving this an 86. Cool. That's not a bad score, though. No, it's not. It's not bad. Not at all. All right. Very good. I love it. Chris, what are your thoughts? All right. So on the nose, I got... You guys ever had a good glass of sherry? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing but sherry on the on the nose. I got raisins. It was nutty. Um, yeah. It was a little bit sweet. Um, caramel. But it just it just reminded me of a very like high quality semi sweet sherry. So when I went to the to the palate, that was obviously on my brain because I got a little bit of fruity and nutty on the front end, um, but I got absolutely no alcohol on the front end. Mm. Um, for as, what did you say it is? It's fifteen point one five percent. Yeah, fourteen point three proof. Yeah. Um, for that high alcohol, I usually expect to get some alcohol on the front end, but I didn't feel any alcohol until the mid palate. Um, so going in, it was very clean, but the finish I thought was, it was a strong finish. Um, it was warm, but it wasn't a burn. It wasn't that high alcohol burn. It was more of a, I guess you could say a mild Kentucky hug. (laughs) Yeah. It was like, you know, it was like a friend, but not a bear hug. So uh, Kentucky so like a pat, pat on, on the back. back. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, something like that. So, I mean, I thought the finish uh, lingered. I didn't think it dropped off. So, I mean, it definitely stayed with me. Um, and like Aaron, I've had this uh, in the past several times, but this is the first time I've probably had it in three or four years. But also the first few times I had it, I wasn't as into whiskey, so I don't really remember it so well. Right. So um, I give it a, a 90 out of 100. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's um, – for me, you know, a lot of it is – it has a lot of traditional bourbon flavors. You know, like if, if you think of bourbon and you read about bourbon, it has a lot of that there. But I feel like it, it, it could do better in some areas, I think. Um, mm-hmm. For me, when I first pick it up and just kind of ease into the nose, I mean, it's just oak. But as you, you know, it took me a couple of a couple of return visits to it to really start picking up other stuff. Um, not that I, not that I don't like oak. It, it reminds me of you know chopping some some oak logs in the backyard before I'm firing up the the barbecue pit. Uh, so I always I always do enjoy that, but it took me a, a couple of visits to, to really start picking up other things. Uh, and I, I did get uh, some of the cinnamon spice, uh, some darker fruits, cherries and, uh, vanilla and caramel on the nose. Uh, but like I said, it was just, you know, getting through that Oak for me. And once you got through it, it was, it was okay. Now going back to it, you know, I, I, I start picking up some of those other notes first now that I'm revisiting it. And it's just kind of like the, you know, my nose is now blocking the oak or something. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the the uh, the palate, a lot of it was uh, cinnamon. It does have the oak there. I picked up raisins. Uh, I couldn't quite put my finger on uh, the, the exact nut, but it does have a nuttiness to it. Uh, some vanilla and a little hint of mint there towards uh, the, the end of the palate. Uh, the finish was long. Uh, and I, I agree with you, Aaron, it's it's. And it's kind of a, it's on the longer end of a, a medium finish, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, but in the finish, I got uh, the, the rye notes, cinnamon, uh, the oak was, was there as well, uh, caramel, and some uh, burnt sugars there on the very, very end of it. Uh, and overall, I gave this an 85. 85. 85. So doing your math, crunch the numbers. What's our I threw average? off the curve. <laughs> the average All should right. be close to, to Aaron. It is. It is a eighty seven. Nice. So that's uh it's pretty pretty good score. Yeah. All around. Um 
you know, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great score and it's a great bourbon. And I, I've always recommended this to anyone that's ever wanted, you know, and asked me what's a good bourbon. So, well, from Kentucky, pick up some nose milk. Yeah. So. Yep. I gotta say, I walked into the, my, my local liquor store and this was the first bottle I saw on the shelf. And I knew I was like, ah, at least I'm in a good place. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a, it's a very re- respectable bourbon. I don't know what year it was. The first time I had this, I was in Bardstown at, um, that's a bed and breakfast there. I can't remember the name of it, but it's in downtown Bardstown. Uh, and my friend and I were up there. Gosh, it's probably been 12, 15 years ago, I guess. And they had uh, Noah's Mill and Rowan's Creek on the shelf. And that was the first time either of us had seen either one of them. And, we, you know, we didn't know anything about them. So we, we both tried it. And I can't remember which was uh, my buddy's favorite. I want to say it was Noah's Mill. I could, I could be wrong. Um, but there for a long time, he you know, it was just head over heels for it. It was his favorite bourbon and that's what he bought a lot. And, uh, you know, in, in line with what you were saying, Aaron, I'd be curious to know if it, how much it's changed over the years. Yeah. I, yeah, and you know, they're, they're all small batches. And so, you know, they're all going to be a little different here or there. Um, but I, you know, I just, you know, I remember the first bottle of this I had, and I don't know if it was just like the, you know the the wow factor of it like oh i finally got a bottle of this that made me like it so much yeah but uh revisiting it after you know i feel like my palates have has evolved and been trying tons of different bourbons it's just you know it, it's still a great bourbon but it just didn't like wow me like i remembered it did right uh the first bottle i had so and that was also you know four or five years ago so you know yeah, it, there was um that app. I can't. I never can remember the name of it anymore. The one where we met on air. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, distilled. Yeah, distilled. And uh, the, uh, Kentucky Pride was one of uh, you know my favorite. Like I just used to love the finish on that thing. Yeah, yeah. And I revisited it recently, and you know that's another KDB product, and um or KBD uh, product, and it just wasn't what I remember it being, it was the same thing. So I don't know if it's just, you know, that bottle has been sitting for a little while too and been open, but just going back to it, I was like, it just felt like something was missing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it was. So anyway, well, cool. So the final, final score was, what'd you say? An 87? Seven. 87. 87. Well, that's a solid score. Yeah. Still a solid score. And it, it usually runs around, uh, it was 50 here for me. 50-ish. Yeah, yeah. around 50-ish. 50 for mine. And okay. I'd always have a bottle of 50 bucks. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, I mean, nowadays it's a, it's a middle of the road price, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, you know. And yeah, once it moves to $100, I'm not going to have a bottle anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As long as it stays at that fifty dollar point, I'll have one all day long, baby. All day long. That's right. Well, all right. So that's an eighty-seven fifty bucks for Noah's Mill. Uh, that's that's a pretty good score. So if you're into it, haven't had it, worth a shot. Pick it up. Um, Can I ask you guys a question real yeah, quick before we sign. Yeah, of course. So I've listened to your shows. How much do you guys drink while you're reviewing? Like uh, uh, ounce wise, bottle wise. I've, I'm always uh, curious so, because I know how much I just drank and I bet it's more than you did. Uh, well, I, I've, I, I had a glass while I was making dinner tonight and then no, no, after, no, I mean, just after, in the, just in the time frame we've been on the show. <laughs> oh, just since we've been on the show, just for I've, your actual, your, your reviewing the product. Like if you, when you sit down and you okay. a whiskey, like you drink an ounce, you drink two ounces. I've probably had about three and a half, four ounces. Well, that's that's not, that's better than I, that's more than I thought because I've had about probably a third of my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you had to keep re, you had to keep revisiting it. That's all it was. Absolutely, absolutely. But I'm just curious because, like I said, I don't do this all the time, and you guys do. So yeah, no, it, I mean it ranges for me. Like if I'm having trouble putting my finger on something, and I find myself, you know, two thirds of the way through it, you know, I sometimes though when the when the glass gets kind of low. I'll start picking up more notes out of the nose. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, 
so a lot of times, you know, I'll find myself two thirds of the way and I, I'm tempted to fill it back up. And I'm like, nope, let me just revisit this while it's at this level to see if there's anything different that I get. Um, but I would say on average, I probably drink in the course of one of these shows, probably three ounces. Okay. And, and Chris, I was actually, uh, I, th- I think it was one of our prior shows. I was telling Seth, uh, a lot of times I pour a glass before the show starts. And then I, ha- I have a, uh, bong from a actual barrel that I just set right on top of it and I let it open up. And then I pour another glass and I, I usually have them side by side as I'm tasting. So I can compare one that's been open, opening up uh, for about, about an hour to one that's just been poured. And you'd be surprised on the difference of what you're getting out of each each one of them. Absolutely. And I'm going to be interested in a couple weeks to go back to this bottle because I literally opened it right before the show started tonight. Oh, yeah, so, it's going to change totally. So yeah. I know it's going to change. And I mean, I always revisit my bottles. I have bottles that I absolutely hate and then I revisit them a month later and then they're fantastic. So, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I've, yeah. I've had some some fantastic bottles that I've revisited. I mean, uh, the promise of hope. Parker's Heritage. When I first opened it, I was like, uh, you know, it's okay. I'm not sure it's 80 bucks. Of course, that was, you know, three, four years ago, whatever it was. And, uh, I mean, it, it ended up opening up fantastic. It was great. And Elijah Craig 23 did the same thing too. I was very disappointed in it when I first got it. And it's like each time I revisit it, it, it just, it, it still doesn't warrant the price in my mind. But it has gotten better. It has gotten a lot better. I was super disappointed when I first bought it. So no, they they all open up. They all open up. But it, in line with what Aaron was saying, uh, a lot of times it, tonight I didn't make it home in time to to do this. But um, I'll pour a glass before we record, and I'll take a nose of it, and if I can, I'll jot down a few notes. But then I'll leave that same glass sitting out. You know, if yeah, it's absolutely. if if it's thirty minutes or an hour before we record, I'll still be drinking out of that same glass. Yep. Um, so it's um, yeah. I mean, they change just in that course of time. And I don't know if either one of y'all. I'm. I can't say I'm notorious for doing this, but I'll do it probably at least once a month. I'll fill up a glass, and my wife and I'll sit down to watch TV on the weekends, and you know, I'll all but you know, take the last little drops out of, out of the glass. So there'll be, you know, just barely a, a, a sip left in it. Well, then I'll fall asleep and then I wake up and it's like two or three in the morning. Well, I don't want to finish it then. So I'll just set it on the table or set it on the counter and I'll go to bed. But have you ever done that and then revisited it the next morning? Yeah, it's, it's, it changes completely. So what I end up doing is I take a lot of pictures for my website and for, instagram and stuff and i use a lot of whiskey and i'll do it in the middle of the day so i might have a drink or a little bit and but i'll forget about it and then i come back a day later and it's still sitting on my desk and i'm like oh you know i need to try this yeah so yeah it completely changes yeah well and especially with you know the amount that i have left in a glass and, and it sits there for you know six eight hours whatever yep the alcohol is all but evaporated out of it Yep. And so you're just getting, I mean, it's in a lot of cases, it's just like sugar and caramel and vanilla. I mean, that yeah. there, there is no oak. There's not a lot of spice to it at all. And you pick up those real sweet flavors of it. Sweet but it is it. super interesting to do. Yeah. And try. Yep. Well, Chris, thanks for being on, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. I had a great time. It was fun. Yeah. So. Where can folks find you? Where can they find your products? You guys can uh, find me. I run our Instagram. Um, we're at Roundtable Woodworks on Instagram. We have a Facebook page, but don't look for us there because we don't update it. <laughs> um, I mean, you can find us. That's great. We'll respond to messages, but that's about it. Um, you can also find us at roundtablewoodworks.com. Um, if you're looking specifically for barrel chips or uh, our uh, whiskey barrel smoking chips, that's at barrelchips.com. Um, it's going to take you to the Etsy page. So everything is central at roundtableworldworks.com. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. And, and I would encourage anybody that, 
I mean, it, you don't have to, you know, be a, a barbecue whiz. I mean, even if you just have a grill, a, a gas grill or a charcoal grill, definitely pick up those uh, those barrel chips, those things. I mean, just to open the bag and smell them. You know, my, my wife isn't a, a big whiskey fan, but I, I got those in the mail that day and I opened them up. I was like, you just got to smell this. And she goes, oh, wow. Those, I mean, like I need a candle that smells like that, man. That's worth the cost of entry right there. Yeah, I know. Just this. Yeah, most definitely. So yeah, they're, they're definitely worth checking out. I mean, that, uh, that to me is a good entryway gateway product for you guys. I mean, for anybody that grills, like I say, gas, charcoal, doesn't matter. They're worth picking up in my opinion. I mean, just to, to throw those in, you know, like a little cast iron box there, you know, over the flame while you're cooking burgers, it would be sufficient for that too. Mm-hmm. So definitely worth checking, checking them out, checking them out. Mr. Aaron. Oh, I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, man. Happy oh, to. Oh yeah, definitely. Happy to. Aaron, thanks for facilitating all of it. And I'm glad yeah, no problem. Uh, we, we had some hits and misses as far as timing goes, people being sick, people having work and life, life in general. So thanks for being patient too. Absolutely. Anytime you guys were patient with me as well. So, well, life with kids, life with families, it, uh, life happens. Yeah. Right. Aaron, what about you, brother? Well, you can find me as usual at, uh, bourbon cave on Instagram and Twitter. I write for the bourbon Zeppelin. I proof single barrel, uh, bourbons. I write for the Sons of Winston Churchill, so you can find all my reviews on there as well. And uh, probably coming up in the next ep- uh, next probably release or maybe the following release of the Bourbon Zeppelin, you you might find a little uh, article about a Glen Cairn glass display that's hanging on my wall uh, that Chris made. So look for that. Absolutely, look for that. <laughs> Yes, you got to check that out. Um, I am Seth P. Brown on Instagram and Twitter. I am not on Twitter all that much, but you can find me there occasionally. Uh, I'm on this show, Firewater Review, of course. I'm also on the Bourbon Show. You can find all of our shows on the ABV Network. You can listen to them there. So I encourage each and every one of you listening to this to check out the rest of those shows. We enjoy your views as well. Uh, go into iTunes. You can do it as well in Google Play and Stitcher. Uh, But please review. Please leave your feedback. Review the show if you would. And we prefer five stars. But if you're not feeling it, let us know what we could do better or what we're doing right. That's it. Chris, thanks again for being on, buddy. It was a pleasure. Anytime. And we will see you guys next week. Cheers. Later. review is part of the abv network for more information or to become a sponsor please visit abvnetwork.com thanks for listening and cheers